Anybody want to lead us off? Uh, Tony, I think you guys have outscored your opponents 100 to 12 in the first half. Can you kind of delve into maybe the emotional impacts that has both on your team in a positive way and on the opponent kind of a demoralizing effect? For us, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about getting off to a fast start. You know, I think the, the faster we start, uh, the quicker we get into rhythm. Um, and so it, it, it helps the psyche on the sideline with all the offensive guys, also with the defense. And then I would imagine it probably puts some pressure on the opposing team as well. But that's a focus for ours. I didn't know the actual spread there. I didn't know the numbers, but uh, that's good to know, you know, because sometimes it doesn't feel like <laughs> it doesn't feel like that. Uh, but no, no, we want to get off to a fast start. Um, we always talk about uh, just coming out, playing clean, get off to a fast start, put some pressure on defense, and go have fun. Everybody had put Trevor and Travis on all these Heisman lists at the beginning of the year. And obviously the numbers aren't there just because of the way the games have, have played out. But can you just speak to, as a coaching staff, you guys don't, there's no need to worry about that, is there? And, and you don't. No, we, we, don't, we don't worry about it. Uh, obviously that decision is that decision's made outside of our control, outside of our building. We just focus on being the best version of ourselves, playing our best football. Uh, and, and offensively, we've always talked about as well, you know, not having an ego. Uh, with what we do offensively, you know, each team's going to have a plan on how they want to defend us, and we just have to take what's there. Uh, so I'll speak in this Travis's situation. I mean, he's faced a lot of eight-man boxes. A lot of people said we're not going to let you run the football, uh, but he's still running hard. Uh, he's still playing at a high level, uh, and if he continues to do that, then ultimately at the end of the season, you know, he'll look up and he'll get what he's earned. Uh, so that's all we really talk about. We don't focus on, you know, any of the awards because at the end of the day, it's a team sport. It's the ultimate team sport, and that's all we focus on is, is how these guys play, and then we let everybody else decide. All that other stuff. Jeff was saying that he went up to T. Like, I think you're done after just a couple of series. And T was like, yeah, get somebody else in there. The rest of the team, do they take that same mindset and that attitude? No question. I think you, there, there's a couple of pictures. If you just go look at the, the end of the Syracuse game, when, when Chez gets in there and breaks a long run, you know, Travis is one of the first guys to congratulate him coming off the field. Same thing with Mikey Dukes when, uh, when he scored this week. And so those guys, uh, they, they understand they were in that position at one time. Uh, and they appreciate the fact that the older guys, you know, wanted them to get an opportunity to play. And they also understand too that that we got to have depth. And the only way that we build depth is the competitive depth is that those guys get experience. So they're excited to play. Um, they want to play. Obviously, they're competitors, but they're excited to see their teammates play. They understand the benefit long term. And I think that's been something that's really helped our program over the last couple of years. Is as we get to the end of the season, because we played a lot of guys, you know, guys are able to stay fresh. And also, you have that competitive depth down the stretch. Tony, guys can stay fresh. Does it limit their Sharpness. I mean, if, tra if uh, Trevor's only playing 15 minutes, does that? I mean, does that help the sharpness, or can you stay sharp even when you're not on the field? Or you know, I think you're. It's a combination of the game and practice too. I think think the way that you prepare and how you practice is going to determine how you play. And so, uh, the the key is making sure when we come out on this practice field that we're sharp. Uh, and then again, obviously, this was Trevor's first situation where you know he came out uh, relatively early. But but Travis has played a good amount of snaps throughout the course, even though. Um, those other guys have played. Uh, Travis has still played a good amount of snaps. So I think it's really what they do on the practice field and then maximizing the opportunities they have in the game um, will determine how, how well they play. Do you think Travis, we coach? Go ahead. Is Travis in last year, the end of the year, the best example of what you're talking about, staying fresh, um, compared to, I guess, the year before when he was just the opposite? You know, the year before, I think it was a, it was a different situation. So I think that's a yes and a, and a, and a no answer to that one. Uh, the first being when he was a freshman, you know, he was coming straight in from high school, hadn't been in the weight room. So I think that was a function of just, you know, playing a longer season, not understanding how to take care of his body. And then, then the next year, the ability to play guys helps him to stay fresh throughout the course of the year. But again, he did, he did play a lot of snaps. I think the biggest thing for those guys is, is not just the snap counts, but how they prehab how their nutrition is, how they're sleeping. I think that's a big, big component of them being able to be at their best uh, at the end of the season. You think with uh, the way Coach Sweeney pulls guys like Trevor and them, that maybe he can kind of start a trend necessarily where making these Heisman voters have actually kind of like watch games instead of getting caught up in so much statistics? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I know the answer to that to that one, but 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 hopefully you know it, it does resonate throughout college football that 
that it's not about stats. You know, it's about it's about managing your locker room, creating a culture. That's the culture that we have in place. Uh, coach believes in giving guys an opportunity to play that deserve to play, and we reward those guys for the way that they work in practice. And so, you know, that's something that that, that we believe in wholeheartedly. Starting starting at the top with Coach Sweeney, all the way down to, to the coaches through the locker room. Uh, and if it catches on, it catches on. But but really, we're focusing on ourselves. Uh, but you know, here recently we've had a, we've had a chance to kind of impact uh, impact college football a little bit. Can you kind of compare and contrast the competition between uh, Chez and Dukes as far as their battling for you know positioning with the back door? You know, it's it's day to day. You know, it's week to week. Uh, I think they each got a different set of skills. Uh, you watch Chez run. I mean, he's a he's a violent downhill one cut runner. You watch Dukes. Uh, he's very elusive. Uh, likes to get in open space. Very very quick to uh, So so they're different. But I think the biggest thing for them is is week to week being able to grasp well, you know what the what the protection plan is and this week here is going to be it's going to be tough cuz uh, Bateman does a great job up in North Carolina uh, he changes his fronts a lot brings a lot of uh, exotic blitzes so to speak he's bringing corners bringing safeties and he's got you stemming in and out of front so the biggest thing for those guys is is me having the confidence to put them in the game if they can keep my quarterback upright i think running the football they have they have a good grasp of what we're trying to do from a schematic standpoint uh, but the biggest thing is just me having the confidence that they can make the adjustments and, and be able to communicate with the offensive line and the quarterback you know as quick as it happens in the game so that they can can get in there so we, so week to week is different um, but uh, biggest thing for those guys is just coming to work and they've had and they both got a great attitude you know they both understand you know where they're at on the depth chart they understand why they're there uh, they understand the things that they got to work on and they attack it every single week and you know last uh, you know the other night was a really good opportunity for us to get them some playing time and hopefully as the season goes on we'll continue to have more opportunities to get them in there and so they can show me in the game uh, not just on the practice field They got they got players. Um, you know, biggest thing is is they're playing hard. You know, they're playing hard. Uh, you can tell that. Uh, you know, they believe in the scheme. Uh, their, their nose guard number 92 uh, does a really really good job inside. Uh, he can all, he can be a two gap guy. He can be a penetrator when he wants to. Uh, they're athletic at defensive end. Uh, I remember I remember number 12 Fox from uh, from coming out of uh, when I was recruiting Gwinnett County from Collins Hill. Uh, he's a very, very strong. Reminds me a lot of like a, a Vic Beasley type of guy. You know, probably not, you know, 270 pounds, but man, he's strong for for his size. Uh, a veteran guy's played a lot of football. Um, you know, their their safeties are aggressive. You know, they're aggressive, and then their corners are confident playing man coverage. And then the scheme, you know, gives them a chance. Uh, Bateman's very, very multiple. Uh, he's going to stem and move his front. He's always going to be challenging you. He's going to he's going to get that seventh defender near the box, whether it's the nickel Sam in in, in their uh, in their odd structure, or it's going to be one of those safeties fitting in their uh, in their four down two shell structure. So so it's going to be a good challenge for us. You know, both you know figuring out in the running game uh, because again. They, they're so multiple and they change fronts and they create so many single blocks on a lot of things that they do. So you got to be, you got to be pinpoint accurate in the running game. And then because of that, they get so many guys near the box that they can bring a lot of pressure and they can run you, run your protections hot if you're not careful. So it's going to be a good challenge for us all the way across the board, you know, at every position to make sure that we respect the preparation process this week, just like we did last week. And that was probably the thing I was.